So let's segue into why this all makes sense and what this means to you. So let me just start a couple different places. If you look at this part, you may recognize what this is. This is a musical mouthpiece. Many of you, I'm sure, have played musical instruments, and I know many of you have listened to music. So this is a manufacturer in the United States that manufactures trumpet mouthpieces, among other applications. This was made on a lathe. This happens to be out of brass. We'll talk about materials as well. L many of you ride in a car. In today's cars, in fact, almost all of you will ride in a car in this country. There's such a thing for safety called airbags. Those came on probably in the late 80s or early 90s. And this little device is an ignition device to deploy the airbag. So there was millions of these that we made to very exacting tolerances. And this sharp point punctures a membrane where two gases will mix. And when they mix, they violently explode. And that's what opens the airbag and deploys the airbag to save your life. This is something you probably wouldn't recognize. Remember, I've been in the industry for 40 years. When I was in college, computers weren't even around. So when the IBM computer came around, which was one of the first, there was a hard drive that had a floppy disk. There was the larger floppy disk, and then there were the smaller floppy disks. And this was part of the hard drive. So this was a very close tolerance aluminum and stainless component that spun the actual uh, floppy drive in the computer to read it so you could actually save your programs and your documents on a computer. Many of you probably know what this looks like. This is a level. If you've ever worked in construction, I'm sure you know what this is. Well, you can see the, 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 the actual bubble, air bubble, goes back and forth. And so we had to machine the inside diameter. Remember, ID is inside diameter to a radius so that this bubble would be very accurate on the level. If we didn't machine it properly, it would not be straight and it would not be accurate. The closer the tolerance that you can hold on a lathe or on a grinder or on a milling machine usually means the more accurate or it usually means the better functionality of the part. For example, this component is a gyro. This is in a defense uh, mechanism or, or a guidance system. So this had to be held very close tolerance, and this rotates a very back and forth. So on a plane or on a jet, you have all these different pitch and yaw and all these different uh, at latitudes that the device, whether it be a missile or a jet or a commercial airplane, has to be very straight and has to maneuver. That's what a gyro does. Some of you might recognize this if you've ever been to the dentist, and hopefully many of you have. This is a dental handpiece. It's made out of stainless. Uh, obviously, when there's water involved, you don't want things to rust. Okay, So this is a dental handpiece. Going back to aerospace, there's all these little motors on a jet or on a commercial airliner. And there's a servo motor, and this is a, uh, a, a bell housing for a servo motor on an aerospace application. Once again, a very close tolerance application. Hopefully most of you at some point in your life have had an x-ray. An x-ray has a target and it has, I think, an anode and a cathode and it's hit with electrons to produce the x-ray, the image. And this spins at a very uh, high speed, RPM, revolutions per minute. The target goes on to this device and the electrons hit the target. So when this spins, this gets really hot. So there, we machine this, and this has copper, steel, and what they call moly, which is very heat resistant. And machining these different materials is very difficult. This was a, one more project that we worked on. Hopefully some of you guys have been in a boat, and there's an outboard engine, an outboard motor with a, pro with a prop to propel the, the boat through the water. This is a prop shaft. And these are two different materials welded together because on the outside you need stainless where the prop goes on so it doesn't rust. And on the inside you have different material that's wear resistant 
so that the gears can function inside the engine, the outboard engine. Okay, uh, we, and many of us wear clothing. There's industrial uh, sewing machines and there's a connecting rod, and this was a very accurate part that we did decades ago, almost 40 years ago, that it's an industrial sewing machine that at very hard, high RPM uh, actuates the bobbin and, and the uh, needle and the thread to sew. Once again, something for everyday life that touches each one, each one of our lives. Here's a very simple device. This is a toilet paper holder for the toilet paper roll. So that it's just, it's ornamental. That's all it does. It, it threads on in the toilet paper. I know all of us know what that is. Those are most of the examples that I have in terms of what manufacturing is. So what I'd like to do now is do more demonstration about applications and actually show you some machining and actually inspect a part. Some of the math that I showed you over here in terms of tolerancing will make a lot more sense when we make a part and then we inspect a part.